Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make these stars. I know I've made a few star videos in the past, but this one is a little bit different. Instead of using regular 1x4s, I make my own boards out of reclaimed lumber. I also use a completely different method of cutting the angles with my miter saw. I make some simple jigs that I think are pretty easy to make. And I kicked it up a notch and decided to experiment with using spline joints to assemble the stars. So you end up with a very strong joint. So this is a pretty long video, but I cover a lot of ground in it. So let's get started. So this is the wood that I'm using today. It is reclaimed lumber. Uh, I had this stuff lying around my garage for a very long time, didn't know what to do with it. It was actually an old 1x10 board, which was uh, rough cut and in very bad condition. So I decided to um, rip them into two inch pieces uh, because uh, there were parts of the board that were very uneven. I couldn't save the whole board. So ripped them in two inch pieces, uh, ran them through my joiner, my table saw, and then my planer to get uh, nice straight two inch pieces here. And the goal here is to glue them together and make four inch boards. Uh, these ones here are cedar, and these ones here are Douglas fir. And I didn't plane them completely because I wanted to keep some of that character in there. This, to me, looks like saw blade marks from an old mill of some kind. So I think that's kind of a neat thing to preserve. You can also just use a regular 1x4 or a 1x6 if you wanted. I'll talk about that a little later on in the video. The gluing process is fairly straightforward. I basically just put a bead of glue on the pieces that I want to stick together and flip them over again there and squeeze them together. As I'm squeezing them by hand, I give them a, a little jiggle back and forth and I find this helps to smear the glue around and I get a better bond that way. And once I'm ready to put pressure on the clamps, I do like to insert some scrap wood to prevent damaging my project. Then I apply some light pressure to the bottom clamps. And once I'm ready, I add the top clamps and add equal pressure. And sometimes I find I do need to unclamp things and move things around again and reclamp. Sometimes the pieces of wood can slide around a little bit, but it's pretty easy to fix. And once it's all clamped together, I clean up the excess glue with an old rag and some water. So now all we have to do is wait. I'm probably going to leave this overnight. I am in a cool, damp garage, and I think because I added the water, it's going to take a little longer to dry. So about 24 hours later, I removed the clamps and carefully inspected my boards. As you can see, everything is uh, looking pretty good, and my boards are nice and straight. On the back side, there are some beads of glue that we're going to have to remove, uh, but that's pretty easy with just a simple chisel. The glue just pops right off. Easy peasy. Okay, so we're finally ready to hit the miter saw now. Uh, before I cut the angles though, I do need to cut each board into nine and a quarter length pieces. This is specific to a four inch board though. If you're dealing with a one by four or a one by six, it's going to be different. But good news, I did the measurements for you. Let's just take a look at the one by four. So the one by four being actually three and a half inches wide. I think most of you know that, but for the beginners out there, so with a three and a half inch wide board, you are going to need to cut your lengths at about eight inches and one eighth. And with a one by six, I believe it or not, I didn't have a one by six in my garage. Kind of odd, but uh, I drew one here. So a one by six is typically five and a half inches wide. And so for that, you're going to need to cut your pieces at about 12 and a half inches. And uh, this is actually going to make a pretty big star if you do make this with a, with a uh, one by six. I'm, I'm going to estimate about 23 to 24 inches wide with the uh, finished star, which might be kind of cool. I wouldn't mind uh, trying that at some point. So 
Um, yeah, I'll get to the miter saw. I will cut all my boards to nine and a quarter, and uh, then I'll talk to you about setting up the saw for the angles. So as you can see, I ended up with 15 pieces here. This will be enough to make three large stars and three smaller stars because we will be using the scraps from cutting the first larger star uh, to make the smaller one. So you get kind of a two for one deal here. All right, finally, let's talk about the angles. So the first angle you're gonna cut is at 54 degrees. If your saw doesn't go to 54 degrees, you are welcome to check out one of my other videos on my channel. Uh, I use a slightly different method of cutting the angles, uh, but you can do it on a saw that only goes to 45 degrees. It's a pretty good video. So, for starters, set your saw at 54 degrees, and I'm going to bring the camera a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. The way we're going to do this is you need to find the center of your board. Now because I laminated two pieces of wood that were exactly the same size, I know exactly where the center of my board is. It's right where the glue joint is. So that makes it easy for me. If you're using a 1x4 or 1x6, you're obviously going to have to measure for that center piece. And the goal here is to make that 54 degree angle cut end up right in the middle of that board. So you're going to end up cutting right here, and then you're going to flip it over and cut again. And so if you're, if you're slightly off on your first cut, the second cut will uh, equalize it. It'll naturally want to center itself because you're using the stop block and you're just uh, flipping it over. So let's go ahead and cut this first piece here. And there we are. So that point is right in the center. So now that I know that my saw is set up properly and I've got my stop block at the right location, I can just move on to the next piece. I don't have to measure anything else. Make my cut, flip it over, cut it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all 15 pieces and then we'll move on to the next step. So I got all 15 pieces cut but I thought I'd just talk about something real quick here. I ended up cutting one star and doing a test fit just to see if the angles lined up properly before I cut the rest of them. Um, otherwise, all my stars would be off. Uh, but at first, when I tried to put the stars together, I had a gap like this in this area here. And um, I'm gonna show you why that happened. So I'm just gonna move back to my miter saw here. So, my saw is set at 54 degrees right here. You can see that. Now, if I just move this over here, just a little bit, now that appears to be 54 degrees, doesn't it? So that's one of the faults of using a miter saw to make stars. So when I made my first star today, um, this is where my saw was set, but it was leaving a gap. So if that's happening to you, you just need to move your saw this way a little bit. If the gap is happening at the center of the star, you need to move your saw that way. But as you can see, I only moved it over maybe half a millimeter or so, but that's just enough to make a large gap in your star. So pro tip there. Um, once you once you've made your first star and you figure it out that that your saw should be moved over that way again and everything's lining up, then you can cut the rest of them if you're making multiple stars. So the next step is to set your miter saw at 36 degrees, and you don't have to worry about those micro adjustments uh, like you did with the 54 degree angle. Uh, the most important uh, angles are these ones that go to the center of the star because those are the ones that are touching each other and need to line up perfectly. So, set your saw at 36, uh, and then get yourself a scrap piece of one by four and make a cut at 36. And that's gonna be going right here, pretty much up against your blade, not quite touching. 
and uh, that's going to help us make those cuts and not have our piece of wood you know fly that way the other thing i made here is a fairly simple jig just made out of some scrap wood uh, i also cut this angle at 18 degrees and that's going to clamp on there and i'm going to be able to stick this piece in this area and put this toggle clamp down and I'll be able to make that 36 degree angle cut. I also made this little jig and that's to go on this side of the fence. So I'll just clamp that there and that's just a little extra support for this piece of wood in case it wants to go that way. So with this setup everything's pretty solid. If you're not a fan of making all these jigs, definitely check out that other video I mentioned earlier. I'll leave a link to it in the uh, description. Um, but it's a it's a much simpler way of making these stars. Uh, but if you want to, you know, experiment with some other ways of uh, making stars, then definitely continue with this video. So I'm going to just clamp everything in place off camera, and then I'm going to zoom in and show you exactly what we're dealing with here. So as you can see, I've added two clamps on this side and uh, just one on this piece over here. And I forgot to mention that this angle right here is 54 degrees. So that's 18, 36, 54, and the saw is set at 36 degrees. And then this piece just slides right in there. And you can see without the toggle clamp, it's actually really solid. But we'll just use it anyways. Now, for the cut, let's just zoom in here. I wanted to show you where to clamp everything together. So you know that with this piece here, your blade is gonna come down right beside it. And you are looking to make that cut right at that corner there. And it's gonna come right along here to about here. And now earlier you were looking for the center of the board. You don't need to do that here. Like I can already tell I'll be, I'll be going past the center here. And uh, that's irrelevant, doesn't matter. Once you've figured out where to clamp everything down, do that, make your first cut, and then we're gonna do like we did before where we just flip it over and cut it again. And the scraps that you're going to be getting from this those are the scraps you want to keep because we're going to make another star with that. So why don't I go ahead and make a cut right now? And one thing to mention, I do like to wait till the blade stops before I lift it up again. Otherwise I find that the teeth of the blade will, if they're still spinning, they'll catch on this little piece of wood and sometimes this will wanna kinda jam the blade there. So now I'll lift that toggle clamp off, flip this over, slide it in. And make the next cut. And there we are. Let's just take a look here. And that is a very nice piece for your star. So we're gonna do this to all 15 pieces. And then the scraps, save those, because we're gonna be able to put them together like this. And then we're gonna cut angles over here to make another star. I know, very cool. If you like that, please subscribe. Moving on. All right, guys, that actually went really well. I didn't have any problems with the jigs or the blade jamming or anything. Uh, I was able to keep all of my scrap pieces and uh, everything's lining up quite nicely. So before I get to assembling these stars, I'm going to deal with the scrap wood first. And uh, so as you can see, whenever you cut one piece, you ended up with two scrap pieces. And basically you're going to glue those together. And uh, I'm just gonna do that by putting some glue here and taping it together, letting it dry overnight. 
and uh, then I will show you the next step and how to set up your saw uh, to cut these angles with these scraps and we'll make three more stars. So now that all our little pieces are glued together, we can go ahead and start cutting them. Let me just talk about setting up your saw first. Uh, as you can see, I've changed the stop blocks and jigs around a little bit. I kept this one from earlier. This is the 1x4 that's cut at 36 degrees. This is just a regular 1x4, nothing fancy there. But that will give me a zero clearance for my blade here. And over here we have another 1x4 and I've cut this angle at 54 degrees. And that will allow me to slide this piece right in here and lock it into place so it doesn't move. Now, where to cut these exactly? Well, you want to cut that 36 degree angle so it comes across here and you get rid of that little gap there. So I think these ones are about six and a quarter or six and a half inches long or something. So once you figure out where that cut's going to be, you can line up all your jigs and uh, stop blocks and clamp them in place and start cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and make the first cut here. So this just slides in there quite nicely. Uh, I do like to have a little push stick handy, uh, not to push on it, but just to put uh, light pressure that way, just to hold it in place so it doesn't slide like that. Once you start cutting, it'll hold itself in place. And then just flip it over. Make sure you don't get any sawdust in there. And cut it again. There we go. And you can see that everything self-centers itself. So that line is right in the middle. And by the way, I'm not sure if I made this clear or not, but the miter saw is set at 36 degrees. And you might have to do micro adjustments like we did with the 54 degree angles. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest of them off camera. And then we're going to talk about joinery and assembly. So that actually went quite well. All the angles are lining up quite nicely today. I'm quite amazed. Uh, so for the joinery, normally what I do is I just glue these together with some wood glue, put some glue into these seams or these joints, sorry, squeeze them together by hand and let it dry flat. And then when it's dry, I flip it over and put something like this on the back of it and nail it on there. Uh, and that usually gives me a pretty solid star, uh, but I've been thinking about it and I kind of want to try some different joinery where I put something like a tongue and groove joint in here to hold everything together. Uh, so I'm going to be using something called a spline joint, similar to tongue and groove, uh, but basically I'm going to be cutting slots like this onto these facets here. Uh, and then uh, you insert a piece of wood in there and uh, kind of join it together. So all the joinery will be internal. Uh, there'll be nothing nailed to the outside of it. And uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be a nice little challenge for myself. So let's move to the router table and I'll show you the setup. This is my router table. Nothing fancy, just a homemade table here. And I've got my fence here, a stop block here, and a, another stop block here cut at 54 degrees. And I have a quarter inch router bit here. So basically the plan is, I'm gonna take this piece, put it on this 54 degree angle here, slide it down, tip it over onto the bit, slide it across until I hit this stop over here. And then I should have a pretty even and centered slot cut into this piece. But, I have never actually tried this before, so let's see if it works. So this slot joint actually turned out really well. 
I feel like everything's working out great today. This is amazing. This uh, slot is nice and centered. Um, of course, it's probably not exactly in the middle, but that's okay. Uh, I, I thought I would mention, though, that the front of the star was facing the fence. And you always have to have the front facing the fence um, when cutting the slot. So you can't just cut one side and flip it over and cut the other side because the slots won't line up on both sides. So in order to cut this part here, I'm going to have to flip my jig around. So basically I put this stop over here and this stop over there. And that should work out. Here is an example of these top blocks being flipped around. I still had to move my piece from right to left. I tried from left to right and the router bit started doing something funny, so definitely right to left. And another success in the shop today. I was able to router the slots into every single piece without an issue. And these are the pieces of wood that are going to go into the slots. Basically, I just ripped some thin pieces the same size as the slots, uh, or slightly smaller, I suppose. And uh, I'm going to cut these pieces by hand with my handsaw there and uh, just slide them in there. And uh, let me just put the camera down so I can show you what that looks like. So that just goes in like that. And this piece slides right on top. And it's, uh, you know, not too loose, not too tight, nice and snug. Enough to hold itself together. And uh, yeah, I'm actually really liking the way this is turning out. I think it's going to make a really strong joint. It also helps me with lining things up. So I think the glue up will uh, be a lot easier now. And once the splines are all cut, it's time to glue the star together. I'm just using wood glue in a cup with a paintbrush, and I'm just going to paint the glue onto the joints and fit them together. I did do a dry fit before I started gluing, because I wanted to make sure everything fit properly. I did have to sand some of my splines down to make them a little thinner so that they'd uh, fit in the slot a little smoother. And once you have glue in the slots and along the edges and the splines of the two pieces, just squeeze them together. And then keep doing that, working your way around the star uh, until the entire star is put together. After a little trial and error, I did find that doing three pieces and then two pieces and then putting those two together seemed to work the best. And the glue does get tacky quite quickly. I was kind of surprised. Um, I didn't have quite as much time to adjust the pieces as I thought I would before the glue started drying. So just keep that in mind. You're going to have to work quickly. After I wiped up the excess glue with a wet rag, I set my stars aside to dry overnight. And the next step will be sanding and finishing. And by the way, the larger stars were 16 inches and 3 quarters wide, and the smaller ones were 11 and 3 quarters. For the sanding, I used an orbital sander with a 150 grit sandpaper. This was a pretty simple process, didn't have any issues. Got everything nice and flat. And the edges of the star I just ended up doing by hand. I felt like if I used the orbital sander it would be a little bit too powerful. And I wanted some nice crisp edges on here. So that's pretty self-explanatory I think. And if you happen to have any small gaps, now's a great time to fill them in with some putty. I like to make my own wood putty out of sawdust and glue seems to work quite well. I just rub it into the crack and then I sand that off. Uh, if you want some really fine sawdust to use, you can open up the dust collector from your orbital sander and take some fine dust out of that. That works really well and the color should match what you're currently sanding. And now for the grand finale, linseed oil. I love the way linseed oil 
brings out the color and character in cedar, especially reclaimed cedar and Douglas fir as well. As I paint it on here, you're gonna see the colors change. It gets really kind of rich and colorful. You can either use a brush to brush it on or use a rag. I use both methods. Either way, you do need to use a dry rag once it's all covered to wipe up the excess uh, linseed oil. Otherwise, it won't dry properly. So that's the cedar one done right there. Very nice. And here are the rest of them. We've got a very colorful batch of stars here. These turned out a lot better than expected and I am really happy with them. I do plan on making more star videos. I feel like I learned quite a bit making these stars and I kind of want to experiment more with different types of woods and joinery techniques. So stay tuned. Thank you.